This video is about how to use direct quotations in your writing. It will discuss what quotations are, when they should be used, how often and how many should be used, and how best to incorporate them into your writing. Often, in academic writing, you'll need to draw on other sources for support or evidence. One way to incorporate other sources into your writing can be by using direct quotes. When you use a direct quote, this involves using a segment of the original text verbatim. This means that you use the exact same words, sentence structure, and punctuation found in the original text. Using direct quotes is seemingly easier or less work than paraphrasing a text, so it's likely tempting to use them frequently in your writing. But before using a direct quote, you should really think about how your writing will benefit from another writer's words. There are several circumstances in which it's beneficial or necessary to use a direct quote. For example, when there's a definition that is given by an expert in the field or agreed upon by many in the field. In this case, the word choices and the phrasing would be quite specific and therefore it would make sense to use a direct quote to capture this exact phrasing. The same is true when quoting a law or regulation from a governing body as these often rely on specific phrasing or specialist language. Another example is when you want to draw attention to how something is phrased, not just the idea, but the actual words used to express the idea. In this case, it's necessary to use a direct quote. You can also use a direct quote when the language of the source material is special in some way. For example, if it's creative, literary, or well-known. You may also want to use a direct quote if the point being made is controversial or could be easily misinterpreted in some way. This makes it clear to the reader that the idea belongs to someone else and not you. Is there a limit to the number of quotes that you can use in your writing? Well, different disciplines will have different approaches to the amount of quotations used in writing. For example, you might use more quotations if you're studying humanities than if you are studying science or engineering. However, it's best to use quotes sparingly. As a general guideline, direct quotes should make up no more than 20% of the references that you use. This means that even if you quote correctly and reference appropriately, if you fill your essay up with other people's words, leaving little writing of your own, this can still be considered academic misconduct. Therefore, before using a direct quote, ask yourself if it's really necessary or beneficial to use the quote, or would it be better to paraphrase the text? Paraphrasing means that you're still incorporating the idea from the other text, but you phrase it in your own words. For more information about how to do this, please see our video on paraphrasing. When you have decided that you will use a quote in your writing, now you need to think about some of the rules for using them correctly. As mentioned earlier, Quotes should be copied word for word from the original text using the same punctuation, same word order, and same sentence structure. Shorter quotes, which are often considered 40 words or less, or four lines or less, depending on the referencing style that you're using, they're usually placed in quotation marks. Whereas longer quotes are often indented in more narrow margins and not encased in quotation marks. Be sure to check with the referencing style that you're using for the correct format. It's also important to check with your referencing style guide on information on how to cite and reference your quotations correctly. For example, in APA 7 style, citations for direct quotes need to include the author's surnames, the date of publication, and the page number. Additionally, knowing the referencing style can help you correctly adapt the quote as needed. Using the referencing guide can give you instructions on how to omit words, insert your own words for clarity, how to identify errors within the quote, and how to add emphasis within the quote. Here are some tips to help you fluidly incorporate quotations within your own text. You will need to provide context. Comment after the quote. Reference correctly. You may want to use integrated references. Use only as much of the quote as you need. 
and be sure to use a variety of reporting verbs for different quotes. Let's look at these tips in more detail. For an example, here is the quote that we want to include in our essay. It was taken from Turbain's Manual for Writers of Research Papers, Theses, and Dissertations, and it states, you must balance quotations, paraphrases, and summaries with your own fresh ideas. Now, before placing that quote within our text, we want to give it some context as to not make the quotation a standalone sentence. We can't assume that the quote will speak for itself or that the reader will understand why we've included it. This is why it's important to add context. In our example, now, the quote's purpose in relation to the rest of our writing is clear. To add further clarity as to the purpose of the quote, you can comment on it afterwards to explain its significance. As we noted earlier, it's important to reference correctly. In this example, we're using APA 7th style and therefore we have included the author's surname, the date of publication, and the page number. These have been placed in parentheses, yet they're still a part of the sentence as the full stop comes after the citation. Another way to cite your quotation is to use integrated citations. This means that you include the citation information into the grammar structure of the sentence. If you look at the example, the author's surname is not in parentheses, but referred to directly within the sentence. Turbain therefore advises that you must balance quotations, paraphrases, and summaries with your own fresh ideas. Additionally, you do not need to use the whole sentence, but only what's necessary. In this example, we have paraphrased most of Turbain's idea using only the part of the phrase which stands out, own fresh ideas. Finally, it's important to use a variety of reporting verbs to work the quote into your own sentence. For example, verbs like state, concludes, implies, or argues can work well to indicate the purpose of the quote to the reader. The verbs you use can also indicate your position on the quote. For example, stating that X claims that the policy is beneficial has a different connotation than X shows how the policy is beneficial. In summary, think carefully before using a quotation and decide if and how your text will benefit from its use. Use quotes sparingly. Always consult your reference style guide to make sure that you format, cite, and reference your quote correctly. Aim to fluidly incorporate the quote within your own text. Use a variety of meaningful verbs to introduce your quote. This concludes our video on how to use quotes correctly. For further information on using other sources in your writing, see our video on paraphrasing.